Hello humans, this is Jason, and today we're going to play Renegade Scout by Nordic Weasel Games. It's a redesigned, retro-inspired love letter to popular sci-fi wargaming. The scenario, Captain Red's crew having fallen mysteriously ill, he's forced to rely on the local colonial militia for backup as he investigates rumors of an alien threat. Lock and load, citizens. This is... On one side we've got level 8 mercenary Captain Red with his shard rifle and combat armor. With him are two squads of colonial militia with slug rifles and light armor. Waiting for them are three small packs of the vicious swarm. They're unarmed, but they're terrors in close combat. What the? Is that Captain Carver? They say he escaped from the Horde, but came back wrong. He's supposed to be a myth, a boogeyman. This can't be good. Okay, here we go. I've rolled for priority, that is, who goes first each phase, and it's going to be Captain Red's team. The first phase is movement, and we'll take turns moving one unit at a time. The Colonial Militia's base move is four, so moving cautiously will take them four inches, but still allow them to shoot in the next phase. Then the Swarm chooses someone to go. They're already fast, but since they can't shoot anyway, they're going to be running, and staying behind cover, because they're monsters, not stupid. The other Militia squad will also move cautiously, hoping to get a shot at the swarm, but not wanting to get too close. You have to be careful about placement. Even though these guys are all a squad, they have to have line of sight through each other. They can't shoot through their own men. The other swarm unit moves behind these trees where they can't be seen because two inches of area terrain blocks line of sight. Captain Red is a level 8 personality, and one of those levels bumps up his normal movement of 4 to 5 inches, which he'll use to move cautiously here and the final Swarm Squad will run, doubling its move to 12 inches, but still staying out of sight for now. Captain Red has no one left to move, so Captain Carver will move himself 4 inches into cover. Now, no one has line of sight, so we'll skip the shooting phase. No one's in hand-to-hand, -hand, so we'll skip the close combat phase. No one has an opportunity to cast a spell, so we'll skip the weird phase. And nobody has suffered any casualties, so we'll skip the rally phase. So now we'll begin turn two with priority changing hands, and the swarm will move first. This swarm unit isn't ready to charge in yet, so it makes a cautious move to behind these rocks. And because it made a cautious move, and ended up in or directly behind cover, it can choose to shelter, or basically hide, which we'll mark with a token like this. Next, the Colonial Militia will activate. They don't want to get too close, but they still don't have a line of sight, so they'll move up here. In order to maintain coherency, each member of the unit has to end its move within two inches of another member of the unit. Next, another swarm unit moves to behind this tree. They have to run to get there, though, and so they won't be able to shelter. Now, in order to improve his odds of spotting the sheltering swarm unit, Captain Red will move up here. Now this unit of Swarm wants Captain Red, so they're going to run as fast as they can toward him. Unfortunately, area terrain costs double movement. So that's going to slow them down, and they won't quite make it. This Colonial Militia Squad is fine where it is, so Captain Carver will move around this corner to get a better shot. And that's the end of the movement phase. The Swarm has priority, and Captain Carver is the only one with a gun, so he'll be shooting first. His only visible target is this militia squad, which is less than 15 inches away, which is short range for Carver's laser rifle. There's no bonus for short range on a laser rifle, and the target isn't in cover, so he just needs to roll less than or equal to his shooting skill of 4. And a 4 is a hit. A laser rifle has an impact of 3, and the colonial militia have a defense of 3, so there's no modifiers. And Carver just needs a 3 or less to injure the target. And a 2 will do it. Last chance for the militiamen is an armor save. Light armor has a rating of 2, and the laser rifle has an armor piercing value of 1, so the militiaman needs a 1 to soak this. 6. Not even close. On their turn, the colonial militia will retaliate, shooting one of the two closest enemy units. In particular, this swarm unit is getting too close. However, they're sheltering, so we're going to need to make a spot check. 2d6 plus their observation score of 3... a 9. They can shoot at sheltering units within 9 inches. It looks like only these two figures have a shot, though. The rest of the squad could shoot at a different unit if it was one of the two closest and in sight. 
The guy in the front has an auto slugger, so he'll be rolling three dice instead of one. Shooting skill three minus two for hard cover will need ones. One, one, five, that's two hits. Impact versus defense is even, so I need three or less to injure. One and a six. That's one injury and an armor save of two. Three, which is one hit point, which kills a figure. The other guy will shoot, needing a two or less at short range. It's a miss. Carver's side has no more shooters, so now it's back to Red's side. And Captain Red will go to town on these swarm with his shard rifle. At this range, he'll need a five to hit. Five, awesome. Unfortunately, the defense is better than the shard rifle's impact, so he'll need a two or less to injure. Five, fail. Oh well. The remaining militia don't have a shot through the trees, so that's the end of the shooting phase. There's no close combat, so we'll skip that and go directly to the weird phase. Captain Carver's Mind Plague power has a range of 12 inches in line of sight, and he'll be targeting the lead figure of the militia unit. He needs his weird or less on a 2d6 to cast, and an 8 matches it, successfully casting and giving him a point of strain. The militiaman has to make a cool under fire check. <laughs> And an 8 fails, and he dies. The next nearest figure makes the same test. Passes, and the chain reaction stops there. That's the end of the weird phase. But now that the militia squad has lost its second member this turn, it has to make a morale check under its leadership skill. And a 6 passes, so they're fine. With nothing to do in the rally phase, it's on to turn 3. Captain Red's side has priority again, and this militia squad will move first. They're not at a great angle, unfortunately but maybe they'll still get off a shot. The Swarm will charge, which is a double move into close combat, which in this case is with Captain Red. I'm thinking he probably should have stayed back a bit farther. Then, this other militia squad tries to move up here to flank this Swarm unit. The Swarm, of course, are having none of that, and charge into close combat. Captain Red would go next, but he's locked in a bloody melee. Next, these swarm run, swinging wide around this combat to try to get to the other militia behind it. Red has no one left, so Captain Carver will make a cautious move into these trees. The fire combat phase begins, and this militia will shoot at this swarm over here. It takes a coolness under fire check to even try to fire into close combat, and you're just as likely to hit your own guys. But things are starting to look desperate, so here we go. Uh, we'll have this guy shoot first. Coolness under fire needs a 7 or less. 9 won't do it. And his attack is lost. Now this guy attacks with his heavy slugger. He makes his coolness under fire check. And completely misses. The squad leader steps up to the plate. But he's not cool enough. Last chance, this guy attacks. He's cool under fire. He hits. But who does he hit? Randomizing amongst the figures... It's the Swarm! Awesome! But unfortunately his shot fails to injure. Captain Carver can't see through the trees, so we move to this militia squad over here. Nah. There's only one guy with a gun free, so he'll shoot into this mess. He's cool enough. He hits. His own guy! Oh sure, now I roll a 1 to injure. And his armor fails him. Captain Red's locked in close combat and can't shoot. That ends the fire combat phase and begins the close combat phase. Beginning with priority, each side chooses one combat to resolve. I'm going to start with Captain Red versus this bottommost swarm. Who actually attacks first is based on power, but these swarm charged, so they attack first. Each combatant gets a number of attacks equal to their attack dice, but the attacks alternate, and if you get killed early, then all your other attacks are wasted. The Swarm has a melee skill of 5, so that's a hit, and their impact is better than my defense, so I need a 4 or less to injure. Injured. Red's armor save is 3. Not good enough. With 2 wound points, he doesn't die, but he is marked with a counter to show the injury. He survived, though, which means he gets to counterattack. Captain Red needs 3s to hit. 2, that's a hit. But he fails to injure. The Swarm uses its second attack die. Hits but does not injure. Captain Red uses his last attack die. Hits. Injures. And no armor save. Sweet. But no time to celebrate. Now the swarm get to pick a fight. And it's this one. 
The swarm hits, but doesn't injure. Captain Red gets one less attack die because it's his second combat this phase, and misses. The swarm still has two attack dice remaining and uses one to attack. Hit, injure, no save. <laughs> nom, 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 nom. <laughs> now I choose another fight, and I'll pick this militia over here. The swarm attacks first and hits, injures, no armor save, he's dead, no surprise. The swarm then chooses this fight. The swarm misses. The militia can't get through the swarm's armor. And finally, the swarm kills the militiaman. Finally, I choose this last fight. The swarm fails to injure the militiaman. Counterattacking, he needs a two or less to hit. Two. Two or less to injure. One. And its armor save fails. He actually managed to kill the thing. That's the end of the close combat phase. This unit lost two members this turn thanks to somebody's friendly fire incident, Scott. So they need to make a morale check under their leadership score of seven. 10 is a failure. Missing by one pins them. Missing by two or more breaks them. And they flee two to six inches away from the source of the casualties. Six. Now in the rally phase, the squad needs to try to recover. Rolling under their highest leadership score, fail. So the squad remains broken and loses a member. And thus turn four begins on a grim note. The swarm regain priority and get to move first this turn, charging into close combat. This guy is still broken and has to move 2d6 inches away from any visible enemies. 10 inches. And that very nearly takes him off of the board entirely. Then the swarm run after them because that's what they do. And the parts of this militia squad that aren't stuck in close combat will back off a little. The swarm will, of course, charge them. And Captain Carver will run up to the edge of these woods because, you know, he likes to watch. And in case you're wondering, Captain Carver has a weird ability which lets him ignore movement penalties for terrain. So now we're back to the fire combat phase, and Captain Carver's just going to take a pass. This one guy in the militia squad can shoot, though, so he's going to take a shot at these guys over here. But of course he misses because colony militia sucks. Now the close combat phase begins, with the swarm picking the first fight. The swarm hits, but doesn't injure. The militiaman misses his counterattack. The swarm attacks again, but fails to injure. But he still has attack dice left and attacks again. And kills another guy. And then this poor fool attacks. Two. One. Six. Holy crap, this guy's a freaking hero. Now this fight. That guy's dead. Then this fight. Yep, dead. That's the end of the close combat phase, and this squad lost two members this turn. So it makes a morale check versus leadership. Seven or less, nine, they're broken. And they flee seven inches, which is nearly off the table. I choose not to do anything in the weird phase. And in the rally phase, the two militia squads that ran to the bottom corner try to rally, but both fail. And each loses a figure. At the beginning of turn five, the late Captain Red's team has priority, and their only surviving unit is broken and must flee the table. So there you have it, a rather lopsided game of Renegade Scout. And that's okay. Colony militia are just low-end grunts, and the swarm are optimized for close combat. And with the cramped table and terrain, it was pretty much a foregone conclusion. And pretty thematically appropriate, too. Well, I've got to mop up before the swarm start laying eggs and things, so... Till next time, thanks for watching. Gislada Vida.